Isaiah, but again at verse 13. Now, before I do, I'll just bring it up to the place. Nebuchadnezzar had made the, the image that he said that everybody had to bow to when they heard the music. I know everybody knows this, but to get us up to where we're at, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to bow. In verse 13 of chapter 3, then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made well. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy God, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Jump to verse 21. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast in the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, well, I see four men, loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Verse 27, And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men, upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was the hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, uh, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies, that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. I want to stop reading there, and I don't have a lot. I just have a couple points that I want to make. Um, you've probably heard this scripture preached over and over and over. You've probably read it. You probably had it in Sunday school as a kid. It's probably very familiar scripture, uh, but God just gave me a couple points uh, that I want to want to bring out. And the first thing that I want to look at as we go through this is the question that Nebuchadnezzar asks: Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? And you know that's what a lot of time. How do I put this? A lot of time, situation and circumstance and problem and trouble and trial and sickness that we've talked about disease and different things. Uh, some person may not come up to you and say, who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? But in our own minds, we begin to wonder, uh, is God going to deliver me out of this? Is God going to bring me through this? Is God going to enable me uh, uh, to, to survive this or, or whatever the case may be? Uh, but Kate already preached half my message. Uh, he may not take you out of it. He may not deliver you from it, uh, but he's with you in it. And the scripture that's been on my mind all week, and actually you were on my mind when I was thinking about it, was my grace is sufficient for thee. Uh, he may not remove your kidney disease. He may not remove the other diseases that you have, the problems that you have, the things that you have not been through. He told you my mercies are new every morning. He told me my grace is sufficient for you. Uh, regardless of what you got, regardless of what's going on, regardless of what happens, what God has for you is good enough. It is sufficient. It is capable of getting you through any situation any circumstance. It is all that we need uh, to make it through. Uh, we have these three men here who wanted 
crumble under. It would be easy for you to crumble under with your kidney disease. Those who have had cancer, it would be easy to crumble to that. Those who have had other things going on, it would be easy to give in to that and to crumble. Uh, but when you have God on your side, uh, you have a hope. You have uh, uh, someone in whom you can place your trust. You have someone that you know. Yes, he can heal me. But just like these guys said, but if he don't, I still ain't going to give in to it. I ain't going to give in to the fear. I ain't going to give in to the trepidation. I ain't going to let me rob me of my joy. And who is this God who shall enable you to do all that? It is Jehovah God. It is the creator of the universe. It is my Father. It is the one with whom I have to do, with whom we all have to do. And as I said, that scripture, uh, my grace is sufficient, has been with me ever since I got the cancer because God just kept telling me that. And I really began to study that and really began to look at that. And you know what the definition of grace is? Everybody says it's unmerited favor, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's divine influence on your heart. That's what grace is. When you let God have control of your heart, his influence in your heart, in your spirit, enables you to get through these things. And so when these things come along, uh, we have Nebuchadnezzar here, but in our lives we have sickness, we have disease, uh, we have financial problems, we have family problems, we have all these kind of problems. You can watch the world around you crumble under these things. But when these things come against us and ask us the question, who is this God that shall deliver you out of my hand? He is Jehovah God. He is my deliverer. He is my sustainer. He is my provider. He is the one who enables me. Uh, the, no matter what I face, no matter what I go through, uh, he will keep me. He may not take away the cancer. He may not take away the kidney disease. He may not take away the financial, the family problem or whatever the problem is. But even if he don't, I will not crumble uh, to what is going on. I will not give in to what is going on. Because regardless of what happens, I got something better. Amen. And so often in the situation, in the circumstance, it's easy to forget that. It's easy to uh, buckle to that thing and allow that thing uh, to bring you down and, and to depress you and to bring you anxiety and to bring you all these things. And listen, I know I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. And I've used this scripture many, many times because uh, God has given it to me many, many times. I think it's me, as long as I'm in this body, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Oh, sometimes we just need to be reminded God is always there. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. It doesn't matter what it seems like. God is always there. Uh, these men had that problem. And they said, no matter what, uh, we're not going to give into that. We're not going to serve these gods. But listen, they were bound. Sometimes we get bound. That's right. By our situation, by our, our circumstance, uh, by what is going on. Even, now listen, even before they were bound, they said, we trust God. We're not going to give in. But even after that, they were bound. And sometimes that happens to us. The situation gets overwhelming. The circumstance gets overwhelming. And it does get big. And they were bound. And a lot of times we are bound. And they were cast into the fire. And we got to walk through the fire a lot of times. we got to walk through the problem. we got to walk through the trouble. we got to walk through the circumstance. Uh, but listen, uh, though they were thrown into that situation, into that circumstance, into that problem, they were, though they were thrown into it down, there was somebody else there. That's right. And the bounds were removed. The bounds were removed. And listen, here's the part that jumped out of the this, and you might think, man, I've seen that a long time ago. I got to tell you something, and maybe you've experienced this. You can read something forever. Mm -hmm. And one day it, it just clicks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it hits you like a ton of bricks. Though you've read it over and over and you understood it and you knew it. But some days, that's for me today. You know what it was? They were walking in the midst of the fire. Even though everything around them was raging. Even though all these problems were going on. Even though all these issues were happening. They just walked right on through it. They just was walking in the fire. It wasn't no big deal to them. And we see them that they got thrown in. And 
The fire burned off the vials, and, and there was a fourth man in the fire, and we all know who that fourth man was. But listen, I want to tell you something. I don't think they were looking at the fire anymore. Mm. I think they had their eyes on that fourth man. Oh, we all know when Peter walked on the water, as long as he had his eyes on Christ, right. he walked on the water. As soon as he got his eyes on Christ and began to look at everything around him, that's when he began to sink. And that's where our problems come in. If we can keep our eyes on Christ, if we can keep our hearts centered on Christ, if we can keep our focus on Christ, we can walk right through the fire and it cannot touch us. It cannot affect us. Uh, we have the account here where it said uh, that there wasn't even a smell of smoke on them. They weren't sins. They weren't burned. Nothing was touched. Not even the smell got on them. Though they have walked in the midst of the furnace. Now listen, let's take somebody who is not a Christian, what happens to them? The guys that threw them in were slain. That's how bad the situation was. This situation, they didn't even have to get into the fire. They just had to go to throw these guys in, and it was so bad that it slayed them. Why did it slay them? Because they didn't have the fourth man. Whatever comes our way, whatever we're going through, and everybody here has now, has had, or will have problems, mm -hmm. situations, circumstances. What happens in the midst of those depends on what you do. Mm -hmm. If you keep your eyes on the fourth man, if as you go into that situation, as you go into that circumstance, if you make a determination, God can heal me. God can deliver me. God can provide for me. But even if he don't, it ain't going to defeat me. It ain't going to defeat me. There's no way it's going to bring me down. And if we go into it like that, I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it's in the midst of the fire that you get the closest to God. Sometimes it's in the midst of the fire that you learn the most. Sometimes it's in the midst of the fire that you are developed, that you are matured, uh, that you are brought to that next level that God wants to bring you to. Listen, we may not like being in a fire. We may not like having to go through all those things. But I'm going to tell you, uh, through what I went through here lately, I think I've stepped up another level. And I wouldn't trade that. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't give that up. Because it's more valuable to me to become closer to God than to have the best health and all the money and, and all those kind of things. That means so much more. As you yes, go level to level, and as you advance, and as you learn, and as you draw closer to God, the things of this life get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. The reason so much of this brings us down is because we're so attached to this life. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying your life and your loved ones and wanting to be with them and, and all that kind of stuff. But we need to give God the priority He deserves also. That's right. These guys, in their situation, in their circumstance, had every faith, had every confidence that God would heal them, deliver them, provide for them. And I'm using all these words because everybody's situation is different. But they also had a determination. If He don't. Well, that means I'm a really bad Christian, right? No. No. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. That's right. And that's something that, that's out there. And I'm not going to get off track and get on to that. But if he don't, I'm still not going to cave. I'm still not going to give in. I'm still not going to crumble. This thing will not bring me down. Because there's one who walks with me in the fire. There's one who I can keep my eyes on, and I don't have to focus on all this stuff that's going on around me. And I can be unbound. I can be delivered. And if we can walk through our situations and our circumstances and our trials and our troubles and our problems like that, when we come out on the other side, we're going to have a testimony. Mm -hmm. Not only are we going to have a testimony, we're going to have grown. Our faith is going to have increased. And all the, what was it, how does it, Jane says that? Rejoice, 
when you fall into temptation, when you have problems, when you have trouble. How in the world can you do that? I've learned, and I know other people here have learned, how you can do that. It is beneficial. Mm -hmm. It does do something for you. It does help you. I'm not saying God won't heal. God won't deliver. God won't provide. Sometimes he does. But sometimes he says, let's see what happens in the fire. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he lets you go in the fire so you learn to trust him more. So you learn to depend on him. So you learn to keep your eyes on him. We're going to go through fire. We're going to go through problems. We're going to go through troubles. And, and as I said, you all know these things and this is just a reminder. Maybe because this week somebody's going to face something. Maybe, uh, maybe next week. Maybe you're in it right now and you just needed a little bit uh, of a pick-me-up, a little bit of encouragement. I, I don't know, but I want to read you this scripture too. Isaiah chapter 43, beginning verse 1. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Listen, that's you. Are you redeemed? Has God called you? I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One. That's a promise we have. And we need to hang on to that promise. And we need to remember that promise. Whenever the problems come, whenever the trials come, whenever the troubles come, uh, whenever uh, we're walking through the fire or we're walking through the flood, we just need to remember that. We need to hold on to that. Uh, we need to trust God in that. And you're going to go through it. You're going to have it. You will have tribulation, Christ said. Instead of letting it bring you down, Instead of letting it uh, defeat you, instead of getting uh, uh, down in the dumps or whatever you do, see what you can get out of it. See what you can gain from it. Uh, look at what is Christ doing in this situation. What is he doing in this circumstance? What can he do for me? In their situation, in their circumstance, which was the furnace, Christ was there with them. Christ gave them peace. Christ gave them hope. Christ gave them deliverance. Christ kept the, uh, uh, the fire off of them. So in the situation, in the circumstance, though you're in it, look at what Christ is doing in it. Look at uh, uh, what he's given you, what he's teaching you, what uh, he's putting in your spirit and gain something from it. You're going to go through it anyway. You might as well gain something from it. You might as well uh, uh, learn. You might as well grow. You might as well increase. Then if you've got to be in it, then be in it with Christ. And get what you can get from it, what he has for you. But I want you to remember that last scripture that, that I read. God said, you are mine. I have redeemed you. I have called you. And therefore, when you go through the fire, it can't burn you. And when you go through the flood, it can't overflow you. Because I am God. I am the Holy One. And I'm walking with you through it. The only way these things can defeat us is if we forget that. And we allow them to defeat us. That's it. That's all that, that God has given me. And I just pray... You get from it what God would have you to get from it.